the What's Good Podcast. Hey, ladies and gents, this is your girl, Brianna Zavon, with What's Good Podcast. As you guys know, we are here in season four, and we are focusing on the retail industry. And I'm so excited for us to, you know, get get started with our next set, next guest for the day. And so with that being stated, as you guys know, we do not have interviews. We have genuine conversation. So let's get into it. Today, we have Michelle. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. And so as you guys know, if you've been listening, we're not changing up anything. We're going to start off with our icebreaker. And our icebreaker for today, what are some things that bring you joy as being an entrepreneur? Um, just having freedom to, to work at my, my own pace, um, you know, being able to see just kind of come to life that, that really makes me happy, (laughs) including my family in the process, all of that good fun stuff. That's so good to hear. And so with your family, was there ever like a conversation? Like I got to get some work done and then we can play after, or they just understood what the situation was? Uh, uh, they do, they, they, understand. um, I've always been a very, uh, disciplined, systematic worker, even in my corporate, uh, jobs. And so when I'm working, I'm working, um, but I try to incorporate them as much as I can. So they don't feel like they're left out of the process. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, and with that being stated, we always start off the interview with who is the guest. So for you, who is Michelle? Yeah, Michelle is uh, is a mom. Uh, I have two daughters. Um, I'm a I'm a G mom, so I have a grandbaby. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am I am a survivor. I am no longer a statistic. I am all those things, all right? <laughs> um, I'm an educator. Um, I'm a goofball. I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, and I'm, you know, I'm a business owner, so. I love that. And so as you mentioned before, you were in the corporate scene. What did that trans- transition look like for you to become a business owner? Yeah, so I... Um, I was in healthcare for 11 years. I was a clinical trader. Um, and then I transitioned to education. I wanted to um, teach um, medical professionals to be a little bit more professional and, <laughs> and have better customer service. So I transitioned to education. Uh, I was a corporate dean for eight years at a proprietary school. Um, and you know, during the time at that school, I I wanted to uh, branch out into entrepreneurship. I didn't know what that looked like for me. Um, and so I, you know, I did a lot of research and, and then, you know, my, my mom's experience with cancer kind of catapulted that journey for me. Um, yeah, her experience with cancer, uh, just, you know, having a background in healthcare, having a background in education, understanding some of the things that she was going through. Um, then just doing research on a remission plan for her to include the cosmetics that we used. It just, you know, God's divine intervention took over and I started to create a business out of what I knew. That is beautiful. And so as you mentioned, as far as like creating the business, let's talk about Demi Blue. What were some things, and I feel like this is so important to understand, what were some things that you took from the corporate thing as far as like either soft or hard skills to help you um, with Jimmy Blue? Um, well, the, the good thing is that, um, you know, in the line of work that I was doing, I, you know, I had to obtain a, a degree. Um, so I do have a, a dual degree. So it, it helped um, mold my business sense. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of times entrepreneurs, I know they feel like some feel like they don't have to have a degree to be in business. A lot of them don't, but I think that it definitely laid a foundation for me to where I was understand a lot of the terminologies of business going right into it. And I think that helped me to have quicker success than maybe 
someone who didn't have that uh, experience in education. Uh -huh. um, so, and again, having the, the background in healthcare, I, I understood how certain chemicals that were placed in our cosmetics impacted our bodies. And so, although I had already done a lot of research, just working in that industry, I, I feel like I had a heads up um, on pursuing a specific area of research. Um, and so, yeah, just really, it helped that transition happen faster for me than it probably would some someone else. Okay. And as you mentioned the journey with your mom, what was that light bulb to say, this is a problem and now I need to create a solution? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so my mom was diagnosed with cancer and my mother is a very flamboyant woman, right? She is the one that when you see her, you look at her twice because of her fashion and the way that she expresses herself through her looks, right? And it could be her hair, her lashes, her makeup, her clothing, her nails. I mean, you take a second look at my mom when you see her. <laughs> I love that. Um, and when she was diagnosed with cancer, I watched her not be able to express her bubbly personality through her fashion she was losing her hair. Um, she couldn't use certain cosmetics and definitely couldn't use the nail polish because of the that were in conventional nail polishes. Um, my mother's nails from chemotherapy had created a, a, sen a sensitivity, which really made her prone, uh, more prone to the effects of those chemicals than someone who may not have had chemotherapy and radiation. And so I did some research and I originally was going to open this beauty bar at tailored to cancer survivors, only offering natural, healthy, organic, you know, makeup and things like that for women. But God took me on a different mission um, when, we, when I started to do more research on the cosmetic industry and I found nail polishes had so many more chemicals in them and no one was really talking about it uh, right so we know that the cosmetic industries they market more towards African Americans than any other ethnicity because we are top spenders that's true and because we have a more exposure to these toxic chemicals I wanted to make sure that I was able to provide my mom with a healthier choice, not knowing that I was going to be the one to develop it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, the more research I did, the more God began to intervene and say, hey, you can do this because you understand. And because you're an educator, you can have an, uh, a conversation with women about it. They will understand it and it can still be fun, right? It can mm -hmm. still a luxury brand, you still can, you know, really impact women's lives with this nail polish and it be a healthier product. And so that's when Demi Blue came to life. That is so beautiful to me. I love that so much. <laughs> and as I was looking at the colors, now it makes sense. When you mentioned like your mother is flamboyant, she likes her colors, because all of the colors are like super loud, like the light, the neon green, the light yes. blue, the blue. I was like, yes. pink, orange, purples, yes. all of it, all of it. It goes hand in hand. And so with that being stated, I kind of want to talk about the name Demi Blue. How did you create the name? Yeah, so um, originally, of course, the inspiration behind starting the business was my mom's experience with cancer. Um, I have such a love for family and tradition and leg community um, that I wanted to incorporate that into my brand and my business. And so when I think about family and legacy, I thought about my daughters and my granddaughter and my granddaughter's name is Demi. And so, right, that was a no brainer. And right. then what made me happy was my favorite color blue, right? Uh -huh. So I was like, 
we're going to put legacy, we're going to put family, and we're going to put something fun in there, my favorite color. So Demi Blue um, is, is that's how I came up with the name. I love that so much. Okay, so I have to ask as far as the logo. Demi is all capitalized, right? Yes, and blue is lower. Okay, okay. Is there a certain reason for that? I wanted to accentuate Demi for being about okay. legacy being about legacy um, and just, and that's what she represents. I love that. Okay, so let's get into the colors and maybe kind of the chemistry of it. What makes products vegan? Because I had a conversation with somebody the other day. They was mm -hmm. like, for things to be FDA approved, you only need two ingredients for it to be considered all natural. And so I was like, wow, like I didn't know that. And so when it comes to vegan, is that different? Like organic, all natural, um, what's the other one? Organic, what's the difference between those and what makes your product vegan? Yeah, I like to argue that um, there's not a lot of cosmetics that are natural and organic, right? Uh -huh. There's a component that has to make up certain things so okay. when people seem organic natural I have to argue that but to each his own okay um, another conversation <laughs> we claim we we say vegan friendly because our products do not contain any animal derived ingredients and they're not testing animals making them vegan friendly um in conventional nail polishes in the past they would use animal fats um, fish scales, things like that to enhance the product, to, to bring in the colors, the shimmers, all those things. Then, of course, they were tested on animals. Um, and the product is not tested on animals, nor does it have any animal-derived ingredients, making it vegan, a vegan-friendly formulation. And then we say it's 10-free because not only have we eliminated the well-known toxic trio, which many of us may have heard about, right? For malatolulin and DBP, those are those are your basic, you know, uh, carcinogens or toxins that you may have heard about. We've mm -hmm. eliminated three, but we've eliminated ten total um, ingredients or chemicals that have been known to be linked to cancers and developmental defects. And that was like, like you mentioned, it takes a lot of research to figure out those things. Yeah. Wow. And how I, long was it? Like, did that research, like just an estimate, right? Before yeah. you were like, okay, we have the final product at this point. We did all the work. We know what formula we need to use. How long did that take in order to get to the final product? Um, well, because I am a um, perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> I really took my time. It took me, I did focus group events, surveys. Oh, good. Oh, good. I mean, all kinds of things. And over, for, for probably almost two and a half years before I rolled out the nail polish. Uh -huh. And now the nail polish has been on the market for almost two years now. Beautiful. Um, but again, just kind of going back on, into, onto the drawing board of what I already knew and then uh -huh that research towards cosmetics, especially nail polish. Love it. All right, so let's get to the nail polish. How did you create some of those names? I saw Rave, I saw all type of cute names. Yeah. How did you create I, them? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I have nail polishes called Pink Panties, uh -huh, uh -huh. 80s Lipstick, yeah. um, Sinful Sunshine, The Duchess, um, Explosion. I definitely have Sunny Juliet for my mom. Aww. I have the signature Demi Blue, of course, because blue is my favorite color. Okay. Um, so, so there's there's um, there's there's two nail polishes that I named off right. That's the signature Demi Blue, and then the mm -hmm. yellow Juliet. All of the I I allow the a community of women to mm -hmm. not only select my color from some samples that I had, but they also got to name them. 
So, so that's a way for me to engage and pour into the community by allowing women to have a voice and to have a part or a piece of Demi Blue by engaging those activities. And so, yeah, I hosted a focus group event. I brought in over 50 women for the first one. And I had all of these different color swatches. And I said, I want you guys to pick my, my fall winter collection. You all have to agree. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, we went through that process. And then I had a contest on what the names would be. So they would pick up nail polish and they would say, oh, this looks like this, or this looks like that. And they would write it down and uh -huh. then went and judged the names. And that's how we selected the names. I love that so much because that's creating engagement. That's, yes. you know, making sure you put it back into the community. Yes. And, and what other... Like, target marketing. I love it. So what other... Again, so that one more time you faded out. What other brands are doing that? They're not engaging in the community. They don't involve us in the decision making. They're not... They're educating through some minor marketing strategies, but how often do you get to have a conversation with the owner? um about the product not there um and so i can't wait to get back to that um we just rolled out demi blue for girls mm -hmm. which is our newest collection for little girls ages 4 to 13 so we have 14 colors specifically for little girls the bottles are specially designed for their little hands oh. um <laughs> and I didn't have an opportunity to engage the community with that as far as allowing them to name them. But um, I'm looking forward to getting back to that because I feel like that the community really, really, really loves that. Yeah. Um, but you'll see that those names are just as fun and just as unique. Um, of course, I have Princess Demi, right? Wow. <laughs> um, but I have names like Candy Girls, um, all of them end with girl. So candy okay. girls, dizzy girls, um, star girls, bling girls. Yeah. Just fun. Just, just fun. That's so <laughs> cute. I love that so much. This episode is sponsored by Golden Digital Assets Management. With Golden Digital Assets Management, it's more than just a website. With focus on back-end support, Golden Digital Assets Management services businesses by creating the structure and support your independent business needs to operate like the big shots. Go ahead and visit their website at www.goldendoesit.com and get your independent business the support it deserves. Thank you guys so much and let's tune into the show. The second set of section of the podcast is the highs and the lows of your business. It's kind of the storytelling, right? And it doesn't even have to be your business. It can be life in general, right? And right. so let's start off with the high. Anything that happened in your life where you can come back and be like, yes, Michelle did that, pat on the back. Anything that comes to mind? Um, Starting my business. I mean, I no, was, <laughs> I never thought that I would, would, would have a nail polish company. Um, mm -hmm. That definitely was not the path that I was on again, but. Um, you know, God's divine intervention takes us to where we're supposed to be versus uh -huh. where we think we're going to be. Uh -huh. um, and to have my products on the Walmart marketplace, um, to have my products in eight different states, you know, um, I just never, I, I, I just never thought that that would happen. So I would say, you know, that's, that's kind of my high. I'm living out um, my vision for for my own business. I that is exciting. What did <laughs> it feel like when you went into the store and you was like, I can purchase my own nail polish, Demi Blue, off the shelf? Like, what did that feel like? 
so so we're not in the stores of Walmart. We're on the marketplace. So we sell on walmart.com um, online only. Gotcha. Um, we're being very strategic in how we position our products. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought that the Walmart marketplace online was a great position for Demi Blue. Um, wow. What we're doing now is petitioning God for Target and Ulta's and yeah, so that's 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 the goal. <laughs> that is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. Okay, so on the other end, as you know, as a business owner, there's always lows, but then we push through because, hey, you're still here today, right? Yes. So what is a low that you can say that has you question, should I continue with this? Or is this what I really should be doing? Is this the right timing? Anything of that nature that you can share. And then as far as part B, how did you push through? Absolutely. Um, so two, two, I have two responses to that because I struggle with them often. Mm -hmm. um, initially, when I got started, I was brand new to the cosmetic industry, right? Mm -hmm. So as a woman, of course, I love makeup, nails, hair, and fashion, but it wasn't my industry. So I didn't know anything about it. And so I had to research the industry. I had to research the trends of colors. I had to become a manicurist, right? I had to, to really learn and create a new industry for myself. And then I had to teach people why I was uh qualified right yeah. to be in that industry because most of the time when you see people who are makeup artists right they've been they've been in makeup for a long time or hairstylists they've been in the industry for a long time but I was in healthcare right and I was I nurses and I was working with doctors and then I was in education I was a dean so who I had to validate my position in the industry constantly by tying in the fact that we're speaking from a chemical component and a, and a healthy component. And so this is why I am uh, qualified to speak on this nail polish. And that's how I leveraged myself in the industry because I was able to tie in the healthcare and education. So I struggled with that a lot in the beginning. And then the second piece that I struggled with was when this happened for me, because I'm a little older than, you know, maybe a typical entrepreneur. Some entrepreneurs start when they're in their twenties and I'm 46, you know, uh, my children are adults and I have a granddaughter. And so I, I, I always question like, why did it take, why did, why is this happening now? Like, I wish I would have did this 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, cause I'm 46 and sometimes I feel like it's too late, but I look at it like it's not too late because you wouldn't have had that healthcare edu educate that healthcare experience. You wouldn't have had the education. You wouldn't have established yourself in the community as an educator. And you would have just been somebody that popped out and said, I got a nail polish, you know? Uh -huh. And so I see now that it was all about building a foundation for me to be able to do this. Uh -huh. And so now when I say, don't use this or don't use that, and let's look at this, people are listening because they, I, I have a valid background. Yeah, so. I love that, Michelle, because that's what I feel like <laughs> timing is everything. Because as you mentioned, people in their 20s, I'm thinking teenagers nowadays are yeah. teenagers. And I'm like, what if I started being at their age? Where would I be today? But it's like, you can't think like that. It's like how God positions us is the right time. Yes. It's not our time, it's his time, right? And so yeah. I struggle with that because I see so many kids nowadays. Oh, I'm about to do this. And I'm like, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm so proud of y'all. And I just think like, oh, I could have been further along. But sometimes you have to, like, we are our own critics, right? So we, it don't matter what's going on around us. We're like, we should be doing this. We should be doing that. And in reality, we should be in our own lane listening to what God said. That's so, right. Thank you for sharing that. Because I tell you, I go through that too. I'm like, man, why did I wait so late? <laughs> well, what would I have done if I would have done this 20 years ago? Well, I may not have succeeded 20 years ago. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> the 
place in Walmart. We going to score next. We going to Ulta next. Yeah. On our yeah. way up. Yeah. <laughs> we going to speak it, okay? Yes. <laughs> All right. So what is next for you and Denny Blue? Um, so definitely we, like I said, we just rolled out Demi Blue for girls. We did that Mother's Day weekend. We introduced the mommy and me set where, um, you know, women could definitely still purchase a classic bottle of Demi Blue, but they could also purchase Demi Blue for girls that complemented the, their color, um, as a mommy and me duo. Um, uh -huh. we have 14 new colors. Of course, we have six nail treatments. So we have a, a soy based nail polish remover that, that does not have acetone. You know, we have nail, uh, nail strengtheners nail treatments, uh, top coats, base coats, all of that good fun stuff in our yeah. collection. So um, it's not just about the nail polish, it's about creating uh, systems and, and uh, regimens that allow us to have healthier nails. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, this year, uh, what we're doing is just really focusing on continuing to grow the brand. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of pitch competitions. We're participating in a lot of, um, you know, crowdfunding activities to, to, to gain more funds so that we can purchase the inventory needed to jump into Target or Ulta um, or Sephora. So we're really doing that. Um, we have wholesale opportunities, of course. So we're really pushing getting our products into wellness spas and nail salons and just, just really, you know, putting our foot to the, to the pavement and, and spreading the word about Demi Blue. All righty, Michelle. So with that being stated, how can people get in touch with you as far as your website, handlers, things of that nature? Yeah, so people can definitely check out the website at DemiBlueNaturalNails.com. So that's DemiBlueNaturalNails with an S dot com. And then as far as social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is Demi Blue NN, right? So Demi Blue NN. Um, they can go check out my Instagram. Please make sure to follow me. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, all that good fun stuff. And um, definitely check out Demi Blue. I love that. So usually I'm going to do a twist this time. Usually um, it's a motivational moment. We talk about Bible verses, a quote, anything of that nature, um, just to end out the episode, right? But this time around, I'm going to bring it for you. So with that being stated, do you have any Bible verses that you live by or any quotes or any, it could be advice um, to end it off today, but anything just to motivate the people leaving this episode? Yeah, um, I live by one word and that's of gratitude um gratitude for losses gratitude for wins gratitude for life for family for health for mental stability i am grateful for it all um because we can be so far off from where we are um and i, I, I always tell people never to look at things that aren't happening the way you think they should happen as a bad thing because it's all about timing and it's, it has to be aligned with God's plan. Um, and so although I struggled originally in my business with timing and not understanding why it took me to, to be at this point, um, I'm grateful that it happened because I'm so much better in my business because of it. Um, and I'm grateful for the losses that I take in my business because they're all learning opportunities for me. I take something away from everything and I apply it. And so um, just, you know, staying steadfast and being grateful. And man, <laughs> that's amazing. That. That's so good. I feel like that's as, um, like what they call it, um, affirmation when you sit down and you just write everything that you're grateful for, because I know it helps me a lot. Just yeah. to be on a positive end versus focusing so much on the negative, because yeah. it's so easy to do that, and just being grateful for what you do have, because tomorrow's yeah. worries are tomorrow's worries. So exactly. thank you for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> I am so happy for today. Did you have anything else? Because this is it's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say this for entrepreneurs. Do not get 
wrapped up in, in what you see on social media. <laughs> Um, because you may see someone who has a business similar to yours and they may appear to be doing so much better than you. Um, but everyone's journey is different. Everyone has a different story. So you may be selling body butters and they may be selling body butters, but your level of success and failures are going to be different because of your story and your reason. Um, so stick to your reason and and be authentic because sometimes people on social media aren't being authentic right they um they may be uh what do i call it um in uh gosh what's the word embellishing <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a that's a professional way of saying it real yeah. classy <laughs> yeah a lot of people embellish the mm -hmm. truth right mm -hmm. and so don't get caught up on social media don't get depressed about what you see other people doing it because it may not even be the truth <laughs> that is so because what i call it me and my friends y'all faking the funk out here <laughs> they say fake that you make it and a lot of people are doing that um yes. and so I, I say that to say though don't, don't let that be uh, a deterrent a reason why you give up or a reason why you feel um less than uh, than yourself or your authentic self. I am so appreciative for this conversation today. This was so good. I just want to say thank you for sharing your story with us today. Yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> all right, so she gave you guys all the information you need to go support and buy or even share or follow whatever support means to you guys. All of that counts free, even monetarily, all of that counts as uh, being supportive. So she gave you the information and please do so. And as you guys know how we always wrap up, thank you guys for listening. And if you listen to this morning, noon, evening, or night, have a great one and we appreciate it.